All right, so I'm going to get back to work on my tiger here and uh, change a few things to keep getting this done. And here's what I'm going to do next. Let's take a look at what is black called middle pieces and other things. Here, let's just look just at that layer. So notice how as I hide layers and show layers, I get a better idea of what's happening on each individual later layer. And what I need to do here with this funky little line is actually make it into a shape and turn it black. So I'm going to do that now. Selecting that one little piece by clicking directly on it. I have selected it and its layer and I'm going to go back to the pen tool and continue to draw this by clicking on one of the anchor points and clicking on the other anchor point and I believe I have a closed shape now and I'm going to turn that shape black using this global black color and now I start getting into some issues regarding what should be on top of what meaning I might need to ne move items to different layers so that I have better control over the overall look of the work so this little guy here this black shape is on middle pieces and if I move it to orange fur I'll need to move orange fur on top of it and clearly I don't want it on background so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just take this little green square and click on it and move it down and what that did was it put it onto the orange fur layer then I'm gonna click on the orange fur itself and tr and show you this nice little trick here. So the trick I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it away and then I'm gonna click on this black shape and choose edit paste in front. All right, so now it's stacking in the correct way and I might wanna change the name of some of these layers. And in this case, it might just be, I need to change the name of orange fur to something else, meaning I'll call this back pieces. And I want to take a look now at what else needs to be done here around this eye. There needs to be a white shape. So I'm going to come up onto the middle pieces layer, show it. And you notice I have the eye on that layer. So it may turn out that I need to play around with what I have on what layer. And that is what one might think. However, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to show you how the eraser tool works. So I'm going to click on this shape. And then I'm going to come over here to this magical tool called the eraser tool and begin to erase, which might seem like I'm kind of erasing randomly because, well, I am erasing randomly. I've erased some of that orange, but I can't really see what I need to do. So here is the next thing you need to know about layers. When you're working with layers, not only can you hide them, but you can select them and double click and change the opacity, either dimming them, you could dim it, to a lesser amount. Don't look like I did anything there. So I'll put it back to normal. And instead of doing that, I'm going to change the opacity of this one piece temporarily so that I can see through it, see the relationship between the orange shape and the white that I want to reveal so I don't have to work on it forever and keep guessing. I'm going to go under window and then here is transparency. Sometimes it looks like all your layers that you want are sh or the uh, palettes I should or panels are showing and they're not. So I'm going to go to workspace and choose reset my A or simple workspace. There we go. Got that. And now I can see down here is the opacity for that shape. Then taking the eraser tool, I'm going to erase around in this orange area that shape. The eraser is like cutting. I'm actually removing this area of points 
And when I release, looks like there's a few left here. Get rid of those. And release again. Looks pretty close. In addition to that, I could even show you here. I'm going to double click and make this brush a little smaller. It's already pretty small at eight points. Now it's at five. And I can use this small brush to reveal some of the shapes underneath here. So the black stripes. All right, I'm actually going to need to draw some of these black shapes and fiddle around with some of the other positioning and existence of shapes. You can see that I didn't erase any of that orange piece there because it's now isolated and it's its own thing. I just clicked on it and I can delete it by pressing the delete key. And here again, I'm selecting the orange shape and removing some more of this. All right, I'm going to put all the color back on and that's starting to look like I want it to look. Here I will come back to everything orange and bring it back up to 100% opacity and click away. And indeed my, my tiger head is beginning to take shape. All right, I'm gonna work more on orange and then on black and then I think I'll stop without making this guy too complex. I'll add some eye details on the tiny teeth and I think that will give you a good enough idea of what it is you're trying to achieve in this assignment. So I'm going to hide the background layer by clicking on it. And I'm going to go back to the back pieces, which I now have named back pieces, and show you another tool. And this tool here is called the Blob Brush. It's kind of similar to the eraser in the way it feels. If you double click on it, you can change the size of the brush. It's kind of large at 14, and I'll bring that down to 6. You can also change the roundness, so you can make it more like a calligraphy brush and change the angle, that kind of thing. Here I'll make it a little smaller and a little less round, a little more round. Okay, so here it is, this tiny little angular brush at five points and I'll click OK and I'm still using orange and here with this orange color I'm going to start to paint or draw. Really, it seems like you're painting but you're not, you're drawing and I'm filling in as long as I have the mouse button pressed down I am still working on the same shape and the main difference between this and the regular paintbrush tool is that this should and does make one piece as opposed to a bunch of squiggly vectors this actually finishes up with creating a whole vector shape when I let go it makes one shape and it connected it if I click on it here which is really nice to the existing orange shape and I'll add to that shape over here so making a realistic drawing as you can see in this case for our assignment uh, the realistic aspect of it is a little on the subjective side it's a little bit loose uh, but I do want to impose or impress upon you I should say the importance of getting strength with the given tools that we're talking about. Pen tool, blob tool, eraser, the two different selection tools, even the change anchor point tool. And now I'm starting to get the feeling of my tiger that I want. Put on the other layers again. Kind of digging it. Now these are sort of odd shapes, these erased pieces. I'm going to come back to those and make them more accurate. Before I do that, however, I'm going to go back to the blob brush and fill in some of these little holes. These tiny extra points that you see are really recognizing that these are negative shapes in those little spots. It's a good idea to select the object and then take the blob brush and paint so you know you're join joining or connecting the pieces together. All right, I'm going to do more of this in the next movie, and I'll see you there.